And anybody that misses it is going to be on my YouTube channel about an hour after broadcast. It's saying live on Facebook on Zoom now. Yep. Can you see it, OG? Yeah, it's live. There we go. I will lie. <clears throat> All right, you guys got set up over on your your end now. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me have a double check. Let me have a quick check. All right. Oh, you let me know when you're ready, and then it's all set up on your end. I can see. Yeah, it's all good. Seconds. I'll share it to our group. All set? I think so. Give me two seconds, mate, sorry. Yeah, we're good to go. Cool. All right, good. All right, well, I'm here with uh, Dave and Adam of IO Earth, and took some time out of their busy day to join me. Um, uh, I want to thank you both for doing that. You know, I really appreciate that. Uh, well, I, well, I really appreciate you guys join, joining me here. Oh, he lost your head. Had a little. <laughs> there <Anyway. laughs> Um. Yeah, I've. I remember back in when us uh, I. Remember who sent it to me, but they sent me your uh, your debut CD, and I I got that, and then I gave a review, and then after that I bought I bought your the second one, and then after that kind of completely lost track of you guys, and all of a sudden you had two CDs out, and then last last year a third, so it's like you know I got a lot of catching up to do, but I've been been keeping up with you guys on YouTube with your with your music videos. I mean, you, yeah, I think that's a fantastic way for you guys to connect with your fans, so they can kind yeah. of see what you see what you look like, except for in still photos. You know, you want to yeah, see. Yeah. yeah, I think it so, always makes it always makes more of an impact when you you have a, a music video that comes out every so often. It's uh, it's it's something that people sort of they're sort of more readily uh hook onto when they when they see something a lot of the time we we rely on uh we, we try to rely on people sort of spreading the word and just and just letting their friends know that there's this there's this good band hopefully that, that they like <laughs> yeah. and uh that's uh that, that only goes so far so obviously that's that's what that's that's why music videos for for a band like us are so are so useful we try and make it a little bit more uh, sort of a bit of a message involved in the videos. It's not just nonsense of you know flying dragons and werewolves <laughs> and stuff like that. It's yeah, actually, just, it's actually I was going to I was going to say or or us standing on a cliff, but we've done that. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we did have the helicopter. We did have helicopters flying above, didn't we? <clears throat> yes, did yes, we did. Oh, well, the big right. it's the big uh, it's the big slash solo, isn't it? Where you go onto a, the edge of the cliff, guitar's not plugged in, but you, but you play your solo anyway. No one cares. Right. <laughs> you have to throw your guitar off the cliff at the end as well. And yeah, well, af after you've set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to do it, you do it right. Do it properly. That's right. Yeah. 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 Just don't fall off the cliff. Well, that's yeah. the, uh, you know, that's the, <laughs> the most important part. I think. It'd be a I great there's uh, there's some photographs of uh, some of our. Some of our fan club members and and the, 
the Iworth family that we as, as we call them uh, one of our one of our Iworth weekends that we did in the UK they they went to the location for that video it's for the uh, the new world video and I, I can tell you that they all went way closer to the edge than I did <laughs> yeah, <I know>. yeah. <laughs> you see you see the some of the photos and they're they're standing right on the edge looking over and it's it's good for yeah, it's, it's a it's a big drop yeah. right right i i would be about maybe you know a couple feet away from the edge you know it's like mm. have someone else tell me what it looks like over the edge. Exactly. yeah it was good when we were there because we'd got um we'd got those these big metal drums full of full of wood and stuff then there were obviously we set them on fire because again you can't do a music, a music video without at least some fire no. oh, some of fire, course yeah. Yeah, yeah. of course of course you know that's uh <clears throat> something uh what do you call it synonymous with uh rock and roll you know you gotta have something go on fire you know just hopefully you know not one of you not, guys not the, not the people yeah. <laughs> not the band yeah, members. you yeah. can if you can have a spawn on tap moments or the whole band set on a fire at the end <laughs> spontaneously combust yeah it's a mi miscommunication with the special effects guy no we said we want it to look like we're on fire um, <laughs> not just, actually on just fire. doused us in petrol <laughs> yeah uh, yeah you know so i mean like i said that's a that's a great way to connect with the fans um and and also too is like I was I was telling Adam off camera that um, your videos look so professional, uh, uh, almost like you know it's like you know how the big bands have these big lavish productions. I mean, you guys did it probably for a fraction of their cost because you know yeah. I think it's because it's them you know. And, we're extremely um, lucky. We're extremely lucky because we have Wendy, of course, who does all our photography and videography, and we don't, you know, have the kindness of her heart, and she doesn't leave any stone unturned. If she wants to do a film about, like with the shadows video, is about the, the old war veteran, and you know, she wants to put in emotion because the music's got a lot of emotion, so. Like we say, we don't have to grab a dragon on fire because it, it might look cool, but yeah, there's, mm. there's a lot of story. She's just working on a new video for the new album, Sanctuary, which we can't talk about, obviously. We can talk about the album, but we can't talk about the video. And it's like one thing that she's never really done before, but it's, it, it is absolutely amazing. It's, it's amazing. We're yeah, really it's still, it's not, not really sure when it's when, when the album's going to be ready, because obviously we've got we've got all these restrictions that are changing every other day, and we 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 can't even rehearse let alone get together and, and record so it's uh it's 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 not on hold by any means we're still we're still the two of us are still working pretty much every day on on some aspect of the new album but it's uh, it's a question of when we'll be able to get everyone in the in the room and actually do some recording we're still hoping to have it released early next year but but right. who knows really <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I've talked to several different people about, you know, how, how they've been coping with uh, lockdown in, in their various countries and uh, a few of uh, bands that are here in the, in the States that they have people in different parts of the country that they can't fly in or drive to each other, you know, and, and it's like, one of them was saying just before we had our lockdown, which was on March 13th, um, they were, you know, they heard on the news, oh, it's going to be about two weeks of lockdown. And it's like, okay, well, we'll reconvene in two weeks. And it's like one year later, you know, and it's like, and they had their whole album on hold, you know, they couldn't get in, you know, they, they're doing a lot of the remote stuff, but it's, it's not the same. You guys can't read each other, you know, hear, hear the emotion coming out, out of their instrument in front of you. And then also how body language, you know, which I think is a, an important thing to, to get from you, from each other. So, 
Well, yeah. This is the you thing. Know. I know there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have that have sort of managed to sort of squeeze a new album out <laughs> since since this all started. But for the most part, it's 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 artists that write on their own, and they can go to a, a studio and and be there with one in just one engineer, especially in America where the where the rules are different. We right. we can't we can't we can't bubble with each other the way that they the way that you can in America. We you have to you have to be a support group of some sort. So there's there's all these different rules around it. But um it's yeah, it's it is it's it's a lot it's 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 very difficult if you're not in the same room. But right. um <laughs> Because no, the, the way the way that we write isn't isn't necessarily always in the same room, so we, we've been able to carry on with stuff and and get a lot of stuff done. So it's more, it's more the finalising of things, really. <clears throat> yeah. Whereas it's like, that that thing about about being able to sit in front of the same set of speakers in the same room and, and listen to the, listen and... to some listen to the mix, listen to the, the thing that was just recorded and just sort of come to a decision together. It, it, that's that's what we can't do at the moment. So we can do a lot of the, a lot of the technical stuff, and we've, we've got something we haven't we really done that much in the past is that we've got a lot of, a lot of demo parts recorded by all the band members at home, and they've sent them over to us, and we've put them into our projects, just so we've got a really really high quality demo. So we'll get to the point where we can record, and everyone all everyone knows the parts. We can go in and hopefully just just get through it pretty quickly. Unless we change all the songs. <laughs> what do you mean, unless? They'll definitely change. So, so we, we yeah. Change. <clears throat> well, yeah, there was um, one band in particular that I that, that, um, that came out with a double CD and then a single CD. Of, uh, and how they got together um, to do all that in, in the studio, you know, I'm just... Kind of amazed that possibly that you know they tested themselves on a regular basis to make sure that they were always negative every day before they got into the studio. I, I'm not sure, but you know I can't think that that's hopefully that wasn't the case, you know. Yeah. But but then I've seen people that do everything by you know remote, especially if they have band members and. Uh, in different countries, you know, mm. that they can't always get together in the same room to record uh, music. So, you know, remotely it is the next best thing. And um, I've also seen a lot of bands doing a, a lot of those uh, mu music videos with, uh, where everybody's recorded in their, in their own location yeah, yeah, yeah. and then someone yeah. mixes it together mm -hmm. And it, yeah. it, it's, it's again, I think that that's a, a great, like going back to the, your music videos, it's like, that's a great way to let your fan, the fans know that, hey, we're still here, you know, or maybe the process for us, uh, where we can't play live right now and, and we can't do the, our albums as, as quickly as we did before, but here's, Here's something to kind of to tease you over to you know to the next thing that we're doing, and so I, I've seen d different various ways of how bands are coping with it, and that's that's one thing I you know I think it's a, it's great to let the bands know that you're not you didn't you didn't get you're not a you know a casualty of of this uh, pandemic. Yeah. We would, we would, we would, we would never be because, you know, when Adam and I formed the band in like 2000, well, we've been friends for 30 years, but we formed the band in 2007, kind of, and you know, it's, it's mine and Adam's thing, so we're not gonna. It's not, it's the only way it will stop is one of us stop. That's, that's the only way it will stop. But right, that's right. Not, that's, not the wrong, gonna, that's not gonna happen. In, so, you know, I will always be going. It's just at the moment, we, we're so used to writing together and being in one room and balancing ideas. It's just a bit, it's a lot more difficult at the moment. And 
I don't know whether you, I think you're coping with it a bit better than me, Jay. I'm a bit like, I just want to start right. You know, I think you can. Yeah, Pro- I'm probably. I mean, I, 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 I've got my setup here, and what I've, I've been recording just, just ideas, just just little bits and bobs of ideas all the time. So it, it, it feels like. I mean, you, you've heard most of them, <laughs> but uh, it, it feels like this. Uh, this this thing will eventually lift and we'll have we'll have like four albums out in, in about a month because mm-hmm. all the all the stuff we both we're both recording ideas all over the place and it's it's really just it's it's kind of just a case of uh of getting in the same room and just yeah. and just just doing something with them <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Recording, man. God, it's like, yeah. The thing right. is, we've we've always, I mean, for since since back in the, the the in the days of of moments, we have had a lot of a lot of different ideas for all different kinds of projects, and in a that, way, this is we have this too has many given ideas. Us, that's the problem. So yeah, it's too many. For this is, this has given us a bit of an opportunity to to try to do other things as well and again it's it's impossible to finish them off <laughs> this is the thing <laughs> so we'll uh we'll see which ones are successful right once, right. once we can actually record well sanctuary gonna be the next one isn't it Chris? That's the one yeah san- the yeah sanctuary the the next album was it album number six 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 is maybe it? i work at moments don't count the live one something I like work that. moments new world solitude aura yeah. yeah, six. 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 Man, that's Things we started writing Sanctuary before we started writing Aura, because we were we were, I don't know, halfway through getting demos together for Sanctuary, and we sort of simultaneously had a bunch <laughs> of ideas that were all really laid back and uh, kind of a different a different vibe, a whole different idea, <laughs> yeah, so and it was a case of like shall we. Shall we put sanctuary on hold just because you know it's like when some something some of these ideas that we had a song like uh circles which is one of the music videos youtube.com forward slash i were <laughs> yeah. one of the one of the music videos <laughs> um <clears throat> we wrote that song in two days and when i say wrote it i mean it was it was pretty much everything done apart from the producing yeah so the idea sort of formed itself really quickly got our own studio space now so we we, we were there anyway doing, doing... That storage space <laughs> yeah <laughs> sort of storage day, space at the moment we were there doing sanctuary stuff and it was it was like well what about this this idea that we just came up with and so that was the saturday morning then by the sunday night we'd got the song finished mm. and it was just a case of getting the band members to come in and record like record the real drums instead of the the crappy Machine, electric yeah. ones we'd got on there get rose to come in and do the vocals and and obviously yeah, and chris obviously and yeah, and luke and it was it was just done i don't know <laughs> which one circles again <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't remember anything <laughs> well you know there's there's a, a lot of bands out there that have that they start recording an album and then if it doesn't feel the right vibe, you know, they usually shelve it and hmm. uh, whether or not, you know, it comes out, you know, that's another story, but, you know, you know, a lot with, of... You read that with a lot of songs. Sorry to interrupt. We that with a lot of songs where we, um, I think it was Fade to Grey on New World. I think we had that for, it was supposed to be on Moments when it just wasn't right. Yeah, yeah because it was it was it was the the structure it was kind of the same it was verse chorus verse chorus bit of a guitar solo finish it was a very normal song it's and a, a bit of a guitar solo <laughs> and the problem that we had is that when we when we listened to it it even got all the lyrics and everything but when we we sort of listened to that demo of it it's like yeah it's it's like we've written a different band's song it doesn't sound like one of our songs yet and so Dave said, "Well, what about if we uh, if we do mad stabby sections for no reason, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and then it end up on a new world? Well, that's, that's all, really that's all it needed. Yeah, 
we, we find when we write <laughs> stuff, Adam and I, he'll, he'll come up, right, Adam will have an idea, or I'll have an idea. And a lot of the time we go, oh, I've got, I've got, I've got something for that. And you, we delve into the little fold, folder on the computer and go, oh, listen to this end, it should fit. And it's all mm. clicks together that way, really. It's quite, yeah, so I really miss, I miss that sort of um, connection that you have. I mean, it's all great doing it like this, but there's nothing better than grab a guitar and we can strum this new idea and you can't really do that because there's like a delay and then, you know. Yeah, this is what a lot of people don't realise. Like, I've had people at my at my sort of at my work, at my day job, they've said, well, why don't you why don't you rehearse on Zoom? Because they see these videos where, where people are on Facebook and it's a fully right. produced video of 17 different people all playing the same song. And they don't realise that those seventeen people recorded in separate rooms on separate days using a click track, yeah. and then it was all just composite together to make it right. look like it was all recorded on the same day. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. It's, it's it's very clever, but it's, it's, um... it, yeah, it's when it's done really well, it it really does. Like the the uh, version of Mother that Roger Waters did with his band, it's mm. it's it's great. It's fantastic, yeah. <clears throat> but. You know, it's uh, it's not it's a live hard. performance as such. Because well, yeah, and also too, you know, because of uh, different uh, delays, especially if if your band members are in different countries, you're going to get even yeah. more delays. And uh, to so do you a got, live, like Dave, you got Dave and myself who are what forty miles apart where our actual houses are. So the delay between us is fairly low it's it's not low enough for us to be able to jam but it is it's fairly low but yeah you if you've got if you've got a band member that's that's like 100 miles away then it'll be a different latency for them different latency right. latency for someone else and it's just even with these services i've i've seen people say you know, there's services where you you all play onto a server and the server syncs everything and then it sends it back to you as a yeah. we've tried them they they really they don't even work just for two of us when when we do it at least so I don't know I think the best thing that we can do is we just sort of be nice if someone songwriting mode and yeah. um, mixing mode and just get back to recording when that's possible right and but it would be nice if if someone could develop software of some sort that it does you know you know get close enough that you know you don't hear uh, it. Yeah, you don't, you know, and then to possibly to do like a, a full live remote uh, thing, you know, whether it's a full set or just, you know, a select of songs from from each of the albums, you know. We, we kind uh, of did that. We um, we did a live stream, didn't we, for Prog Stock, but we wasn't in yeah. different places. It's when lockdown restrictions were a bit, were a lot more lenient and we was able to get together and be in one room and do a live stream that way if you got different things you know you can use i think it's called obs and a different piece of software you can do yeah. it good live streaming with good audio but to do it with different input different homes and different places it's, i don't think the computers are going to be fast enough to be able to mm. That's, the problem, that's with, pro audio. problem we're trying to fix latency is that you've got to send it somewhere for the for the latency to be fixed and then that place has got to send it back to you so you can so you can hear the whole thing with the latency fixed and that's going to be a second behind what you're playing exactly. so so just just the just the the physical the, the physical process of getting it to a place to fix it and then send it back to you that in itself is just going to generate more latency you have it, it with recording it as well difficult. when you when you're recording digitally like we <clears> do with the computer you know if you've got your you set up, you got all your plugins on your channel that you want to use. You can then you get a latency and you start you plug a string and it the sound will come a second later and it's all Yeah. You know. The problem is it has to be really the the delay has to be really, really small before it gets to the the point where you can no longer notice it. I think for most people you the latency has to be less than I think it's less than ten milliseconds, less than six milliseconds for some. Sometimes I get the latency down to to like ten for when Dave's recording something, and he'll start playing it, and that I can't because you, you it it messes with your brain. You you think right. you're playing you think you're playing offbeat to the rest of the song then, and so you're, play, you're trying to play something. It's not it's not working. 
it just yeah. yeah it's just it's it's very you know that you know that that game that people have or it was it was a thing a while ago on on youtube and it's that thing where you put headphones on and it plays your own voice back to you a, a, couple, a few milliseconds later and it, it sort of it's it stops you from talking because you've got this voice coming back and it's right it confuses your brain it's, it's exactly. the same thing it's because it's so close to what you're doing but it's a little bit off and so you're always trying to it always feels like you're behind what you're playing yeah so it's it's uh it's a very yeah the, it's a very the one the one thing i would say you know thinking that if someone can develop the technology mm. to do that um especially the lockdown that you can do some sort of a, a live show so to speak um and then after i really think of that after lockdown when everything is back to some sort of a normal thing where everybody's able to go do concerts and and everything um i always thought that if someone let's say like myself here in the united states and you guys are playing you know in england and europe mostly because it obviously it's close to home you know and it's an expensive it's expensive to come over here but that if you did like a live you know stream of your show so that you know people in the united states who can't afford to go over to see some of that. I think, you know, cause that's always a big issue with prog bands is because you can't get to every city in every country. Um, I think it's also rock band too, that they, they can't get everywhere. That if it was a live stream of one of the shows, then everybody can pay, you know, something, you know, I don't know if it would be like a full price ticket, but you know, something that, you know, that helps, you know, get uh, revenue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, that's a, that's kind of one thing I was yeah, those always are, thinking. Those are those are possible. I've I've seen a, a few a few bands doing that. It's just a case of taking along a, a camera crew and getting someone to to sort of direct it and to and to mix it for the for the people watching at the same time. Yeah. So it's it's an extra layer of, of of work on top of it, but it's it's possible. You just try and try to organize it for one show oh yeah yeah <clears throat> see there's there's plenty of platforms now that, that that support that that allow people to buy a ticket and and just watch it from whatever country they're in right so right i mean that's it's just hmm. it's just an, i think it's just uh an extra way of getting the fans to be able to see you live i mean the, the downside is for you guys is you don't get to feel the energy you know, let's say from from someone that's watching the live stream. You know, it's like they see you, but you don't see them. So it's like you don't have that connection. So that's yeah. That's one, another downside for it. You know, that's why the the prog stock thing worked quite well because we were playing really stripped down versions of songs, and so it was a very it felt like a really intimate setting anyway. So that worked quite well because even if you were doing that in a in a a live setting with with 500 people watching it still wouldn't really be the kind of it wouldn't be the kind of gig where people would sort of be standing up and, and screeching at the end of every song anyway it's still right, be right. sort of a bit of polite applause so that yeah it was that that was that that kind of thing works works better if you yeah so i saw i saw some of the, um <clears throat> the videos i don't remember where it, it was filmed where you guys it was uh, acoustic, and um, I was thinking those are those are always not. I I gotta say this: not many bands can actually strip down their their music and it still sound good the way you guys do. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the it's that, cruise to the edge. It's the cruise to the edge videos that you that you're probably referring to. There's we've we've done acoustic shows on two. Is it two or three? Of the cruise to the edges that we've done and it kind of goes back to some of the bands that that i used to i used to go and see when i was younger there was a there was a thing at the at, at the time where halfway through the the concert they'd stop and just like just the singer would stay on the stage with the acoustic guitar and he'd do a couple of songs and then the rest of the band would come back on and and finish the the thing 
finish the concert as a full band and it kind of comes from like that because i used to love those acoustic versions and what we've always thought with our songs is that because they start from essentially from uh, a, an acoustic guitar or a piano or both with just a vocal because they're starting from that point anyway and we just we just throw more and more stuff on top of it until it's massively overproduced <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah i do um <clears throat> but you can still take all that stuff off and it'll still be a good song underneath that's right that's what that's what we always aim to do and there's a i think there's a few times where we've tried to play uh an acoustic version of a song and it's just sort of been oh dear this one's <laughs> this one's not going to work is it <laughs> work, we some, of our, some of our songs if we do full for electric versions there's a there's a handful of our songs that we've rehearsed and tried and we listen back to them and it's like i just it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really translate to a to a live setting we did um so, we did our iowa earth weekend as you were saying <clears throat> and um we did a uh, an acoustic show in a 18th century church which was just in birmingham where we're from and we had a, a string quartet, we had piano and acoustic guitar, oh, wow. we had drums, I think. And it was just sounded amazing. It was it was really, really good. Well, I'd I'd like to do that again. Um, because it was it hmm. worked really well. Yeah. Um Especially with some of the newer songs, I think, because because they've got that really sort of lazy, swimmy kind of vibe to them. I yeah, think yeah. get that natural reverb from the from the, the big space like a like an old church really yeah really you nice. it good. It had a lot of um and then the at, the atmosphere of that you know being an old church you know you you know it gives a little bit of more of a i think i like atmosphere. haunting vibe you know mm. haunting atmosphere where it's like you know okay the, you know kind of i think kind of in the same way as um how when pink floyd recorded uh in pompeii you know in yeah. that old old uh, arena that they... yeah in the in the ruins that's, that's, yeah that's it's a good, like it's a really it's it's an eerie show but it's yeah it's very good but it it, it worked you know for mm -hmm. them and you know so doing it i think if you're able to do some that you know you know in other bands too you know that go into an uh an older location you know especially you know in england and europe you have a lot of those older locations like that mm. or here in america it seems like in the northeast coast part where i'm from has more of those type of things but as you go further west and south it's there's less and less mm. by the time you get to california there's uh everything is after 50 years, it seems like they tear it down every 50 years to build something brand new. So it's like there's hardly any old um, relics. No. I think so, us, in, us in Europe, we, we um, as I say, us in Europe, we um, uh, we try and save our old buildings and make, you know, make sure they're not going to be destroyed just because some millionaire wants to put a a block apartments up, you know. So wants to build so a Starbucks. We, yeah, so we, we have <laughs> in Birmingham alone. We have lots of yeah. We got like Aston Hall, which is the cover from Moments, is the what the ceiling in the Grand Hall from there. And there's uh, there's loads of like old stately homes in and around Birmingham. But we've also got the old um, in the Industrial Revolution. We've got all the old factory units that are now being developed into nice. But they're keeping the um, the, the, the structure and the the charm and they're putting in like nice restaurants and bars and stuff and you know it's cool and in the europe's the same Holland is the same germany's the same france but they're all they'd rather keep the building and then sort of spruce it up a little bit hmm. rather than oh yeah that. you know <clears throat> preserve preserving the history you know for future generations you know I mean, there's a lot of houses in uh, in where I'm at that are from 
the late 1700s, early 1800s, and they're still standing. And some of them are in great condition. Others look like they're about ready to fall. fall but yeah, <laughs> so it's like, I mean, you know, for instance, right next door, we've got something that was built in the late 1800s, you know, and it, it looks beautiful. Whoever owns it just kept it up, you know, maybe. I mean, granted, there's probably some modern convenience conveniences inside, but from the outside, it looks like it was back in, was built. And yeah. so, you know, that's, I think that the atmosphere of those older buildings also help, you know, musicians to get inspiration, you know. So, yeah, well, um, we've, we've spent a lot of time looking for like old buildings and even it's sort of places that are relics places that have been shut down or are going to be knocked down i've spent a lot of time looking for something like that for for like a, a photo shoot or something because we're always we're always saying that it, it, it'd be really good if we could get somewhere like that somewhere that's that's sort of only half standing up and just just go there for a day and get some get some photographs taken or maybe even record um some performance or some music video type footage but the problem that we have is that because these places are all so well protected it's either it's either going to cost you ten thousand pounds to get in there for a day or it's just full of security and they just they won't let you in at all we found that old warehouse opposite our old studio <clears throat> the old warehouse and you could actually get in there and uh, it was it was great. It looked really cool. And then it was just about a, about a week later when it was all boarded <laughs> up. It was like, no, nope, yeah. can't. I'm in now. It's like, oh god. So yeah, rock and roll. It sounds like you guys have what we have here: a historical society that makes sure you know the buildings aren't aren't ravaged. We, you know, we have the national. Uh, <clears throat> They said the other one. There's the National Trust and the English Heritage who look after all the the old buildings. So that's cool. So yeah. Um. So like I've been asking a lot of bands and artists. Is you know we we've already discussed lockdown. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Post lockdown, hopefully it's post lockdown is going to be, if not the end of this year, possibly the beginning of next year, if everybody plays their part, you know, because that's, I think that's the big issue here in the United States is not everybody is, uh, is doing their thing to make sure that uh, this uh, virus, you know, slows down. And then, you know, I'm not sure. Are you guys getting your immunizations yet? Oh yeah, we're we we're, we're well ahead on that. We just <clears> have a, we've got to yeah. wait. And Adam and I are not ready yet. We're not our age well, bracket. Wait, yeah, it's, it's all about age brackets and stuff in, oh, in the okay. UK. No, I've I've seen a lot of uh, I've seen a lot of people that are our age in America that are already getting their their shots. But it's yeah. it's the the system that that you're employing over there is a bit different because now you sort of you've got. You're always almost almost walking places in in some places now, so you can just yes. literally turn up and just say, "This is my name and and address." Just just mark me down as as <laughs> as jabbed, but we still have right. to wait for uh, GP to send us an invite. Right. Yeah. That's the thing is uh, I'm seeing it, it uh, early as well was. It? beginning of last month you know a lot of people getting uh, their 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 first shots you know here in the united states and i was like surprised it's like some but you know i get mine wednesday so i'm, I'm okay yeah i'm open you know what i'm seeing a lot of as well is people are getting their first people are getting the shot and then they're saying fantastic my life's back to normal now so like, no that's that's not the idea don't don't no. do that don't go and don't go out hugging everyone in the street. That's that's a bad idea. <laughs> right, exactly. Keep your mask on. Even even when you get injected, you aren't actually immune for a few days. 
and the immunities may be 70%, depending on which one you add. They reckon the Astra AstraZeneca is quite high now after their, after all the tests that they've been running. So but you're uh, maybe really maybe the again. first injection gets you really up there and the second one is just a, a bit of a top up. But yeah, you, yeah. You're not you're not done after your first injection. You gotta no you gotta still, no still be careful. Still still follow the rules. Well, my my doctor told me this. He says even after your second injection, um, unless you know the person that you you're gonna be around has got their full you know the two shots or the one shot whatever whatever one that they use. Um, <clears throat> You know, you can be around them without your mask and be, you know, have a little bit of a, a lapsed uh, restrictions. But, you know, like you said, don't, just don't go up to everybody and, you know, yay, it's over, you know, give them a hug. And then all of a sudden, yeah. oh, it just started up right there. Yeah. You know, I, you know, but it's like I said, if everybody plays their part, you know, I think that so far from what I've seen, the best country that had the, the best plan was New Zealand. Uh, yeah. You know, I granted they're a, they're a very small country, but still, they, you know, they, if someone can yeah, they, take they, that, they, that small model and then build it up for different countries, you know. They, the they, the principle is the same. They've just, they just been proposed on the media because they're not an important country, apparently, in the Western <laughs> world. Yeah. The Vietnam was the best. I don't have it all there. Hmm. Yeah, so it's like it's just a case of not closing of five, are they? Are you kind of don't want to talk about it. It's just a case you've got to you've got to close your borders and you've got to you've got to get your people to understand why they have to stay indoors, why they have to wear masks, and that's that's been the major failing of 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 all of the the more of all of the Western countries. Certainly, it's just getting getting that level of trust between the people and the and the governments. Exactly. There's so many there's so many people they're saying well yeah my 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 prime minister he's telling me to wear a mask but he's an idiot so why should i do what he says right and people right. you have to you have to see the science behind it rather than rather than just see who's delivering the message exactly yeah that's you know but well we'll get through um, it we'll get through it oh yeah i you uh, know but, hope hopefully sooner than later, you know, because, you know, I see a lot of people on Facebook that, you know, from the fans perspective that they're, they're itching to go, I want to go see my favorite band live. I want to go see them, you know, or I want to go to the club or bar, you know, and it's like, it's going to happen, but it, you know, it's just going to take a little bit of time, you know, mm. and it's, we're going to be, we're going to be there, you know, like um, from the fog standpoint, uh, Ross Fest is is already big, thinking for 2022, you know, in, in May sometime, and hmm. they're they're having that kind of. I think they're they're having it penciled in. So you know, this is what we're trying to go for, you know, and so hopefully maybe other things like you know you were talking about the cruise to the edge, you know, the that. I think those. I think the cruises will possibly be the last because they're more confined, and you can't really leave the ship while yeah. you know, you're out in the open sea. You know. I think didn't the didn't the CDC didn't uh, the CDC are working on something different for cruise ships? I there's, think there's so. Going to be something something very specific, something different about the about the way they'll be handled for cruise ships. So they'll try and get everything opened up again at the same time. But the probably all the restrictions will be will be tighter if you if you're going onto a ship. That's that's probably where it'll be. Well, you'll have to, so, yeah. you'll have to be vaccinated for a start. So not gonna, yeah. But the uh, the cruise to the edge isn't scheduled for a long time yet, though. So, like you say, it's um, it, it's still a case of just of just you know we've got to try to make sure I can, that this I can just is gone before the end of 2021. Right. I can, I, I can just see the promoters for Ross Fest are going to be getting in like every band around. It's going to be like uh, sending them emails. I want to play. I want to play. You know, and it's like 
it's going to be the probably their most difficult uh, one to book because of, you know everybody's going to be wanting to play you know because you guys have been you know all your bands have been itching to do a live show and here you know one of the biggest uh, festivals in the United States you know reopening you know and it's like oh we gotta hit that you know and I'm and I'm hoping because I did notice a lot of um, you know staying away from a little bit of the political side but of the last administration you guys you know people from other countries were having difficulties coming in and getting you know their visas and everything and yeah. hopefully with this that, new that situation was that situation was broken before covid that, that needs to be fixed anyway because <laughs> just um we i think it's something we spoke about on uh on one of on maybe the last cruise to the edge there was uh, uh an interview that we did on board and we we were saying that the cruise to the edge is the is is one of the best ones for us because it doesn't require a work visa if we want to work in america it's going to cost us somewhere in the region of 1000 to 1500 dollars per band member even before we think about booking flights to get there right so it it, it really does become it it becomes a, a massive amount of of money and there is that yeah you you're looking at you you're trying to you're trying to go over to america to build a, a more of a following it's it's fine if you've already got the following over there and you can guarantee a thousand tickets on every show that you're doing that's that's a different scenario altogether so it's yeah it's if there was some kind of there needs to be some kind of concession in place for for touring musicians and it's not just america it's it's we've got the same problem with europe now because because our government decided to leave europe so now we've got exactly the same problem where we we're gonna have to end up paying more money just to get across the get across the channel into france and yeah. i don't even mention the situation with merchandise it's <laughs> it's a nightmare yeah, it's all these things with carnets and stuff you have to write itemize absolutely everything that's in the van and yeah they'll no, 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 they'll have to it'll have to come it'll, it'll it'll have to be addressed it'll have to be addressed because because in the end it'll always come down to the the will of the people and yes even i mean you have to look at it from outside of the the progressive rock sphere as well it's every every touring band in the uk no matter what genre they're going to have the same problem and so it affects everyone that likes going to see music so it, it has it it will have to be addressed at some point exactly and you know like i was saying really i think this administration might be a little more open you know open-minded towards this situation you know mm. maybe you know because it's you know you're not taking any way uh, you know you're not taking other people's jobs you 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 have fans in the united states so it's like you know it's not like you're i don't know it's just insane that they that they cause so much issues like you know i forget which band was a few years ago that they were trying to get over here and because they couldn't get their um either their cello player or their violinist o over, they couldn't, they couldn't do the show. You know, they've always rehearsed as the band with those instruments. They, they didn't know how to substitute it on their, yeah. on the keyboards properly. You know, you know, that was about what they, yeah, so when a, when a band is so tight knit like that, you can't just, you can't just call in a random other musician just to come and play the part it's it's not like it's, it's not, not like, it's not like you're touring band. with uh yeah it's not like you're touring with a covers band and you're just sort of bashing out 15 songs that, that right. every, music, every musician knows how to play you'd have you'd have to have so much set up for it and 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 again you have to tell your your band members well we're going to america sorry <laughs> you're not it's, yeah it's not, it's not fair no 
thing the, no, the, the problem with the, the visa thing is not is it that in the US and now in Europe that they will which is absolutely fine is that if you've got somebody within your personnel that can, apart from a musician that somebody in the US can do that job you have to employ somebody from the US to do it or from the Europe to do it that's the problem the problem isn't mm-hmm. the musician going and playing the problem is that you know, if I want to bring uh, a, a guitar technician who usually works for, for me, I haven't got one, but if I had one who worked for me, the governments would say, well, okay, well, the guitar technician's here. You can get one of them to do it. And if yeah. I understand it... But it's like, well, does, 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 that your, does that guitar te- te- technician, does he know does he know which guitar gets which tuning and when to hand me what guitar? And does he know does he know when this wire needs to be switched over halfway through the gig for this song if we do that song if we decide not to do it does he know not to do it this, this is the right. thing there's so there's so many people that aren't on the stage that are part of the band essentially right. and it it's um it's it's a shame that there's i think some some like guitar a, techs and the guitarists they almost have like it's like an <clears throat> a esp thing you know they know the guitar tech knows what the guitarist needs, you know, and they'll, yeah. you know, have, you know, some sort of signal saying, "Hey, you know, this thing's this guitar here is, you know, messing up. Bring out the other one," you know, without actually giving any word commands. You know, yeah. you wouldn't have that if you had I someone mean, we, that was. We did. Uh, obviously, we've been we've been doing we've been playing concerts. We've been we've been gigging for ten years, and. We uh we used to just do everything ourselves. We didn't bring anyone, anyone additional to come and help us. And when, I think when when did we start bringing? When did we start actually bringing? Make, making sure there was someone there every time. It's probably it's probably only about it's probably only about five years ago. Because yeah. I think I think what it was is that we we bought we bought Miguel on the on onto the first cruise to the edge with us. I think no, <laughs> we bought Miguel. Come on, the second one. Or 16. I, I think I think when we when we brought him along, we we just realised that because because we're all we're all sort of busy doing our thing, and if there's you got someone that knows the band, knows the music, you can sort of if something if something's not right during sound check, you can you can help out. You can sort of spot the problem from far off instead of instead of getting confused by the 207 different leads that are on the stage really so there is there's an element of that yeah you, you yeah. need you need your people there <clears throat> yeah. yeah otherwise it's it doesn't it doesn't work you know mm. You're standing there waiting for your acoustic guitar it sounds a bit knobby but you can stand there waiting for your acoustic guitar to arrive and you're like Right, yeah. <laughs> but we we talk a lot about about the presentation of of the band during during when we're actually on stage because it all has to be it all has to be considered because you can't you you can't allow it, you can't allow it to look sort of shoddy because people will people will see that and people even if they don't automatically think oh I don't like that they'll they'll think something. No, that, no, that doesn't seem very professional, does it? And it's that those kind of moments where, if you're standing on the stage, or you're at the front of the stage, and the the next song is starting, and you're supposed to have your acoustic guitar, and if it arrives two bars late, you know, it's like, what, you know, it looks it looks terrible. So you know, it's it's all about, like I say, the, 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 you've got people with you that know the songs as well as you do. Then you're not going to get those kind of kind of problems. Exactly. Yeah, I noticed. Who was, with, who was uh, it that we that we saw? I think it was. Um, I think it was Zappa plays Zappa, and there was some problem. There was a problem with Dweezil's guitar, oh, yeah. and they were standing there trying they, they, during the gig, and they were trying to fix it for like I don't know, like seven or eight minutes, <laughs> and you could you could feel the crowd starting to turn. You know, it's one, it's one, of those, one of those scenarios, and um, it was 
it was on the obviously it was on the UK leg of the tour and Steve Vai was with them and um and and Vai's guitar tech he, he, he's quite good uh, <laughs> really after after, <laughs> after after all this after all this time of people trying to work out what was going wrong <clears throat> you sort of you saw Thomas you saw him walk out onto the stage and it was like he didn't even touch the amp he just walked towards the amp looked at it and the guitar started working again <laughs> And he, and he walked off, and and everything was fixed. That's the kind of guy you need. Can we, we get it? Yeah, we had it in Belgium. We had a, a guy called uh, Adam, and that's funny. His name's Adam as well. We call him Little Adam. And um, we did a, a show in Belgium, and there's this horrible noise. Well, it was like a <laughs> all, all through a song, and we're like, I looked at him. I was like, mate, what? What's, what's that? that? And he, he just walked across the stage, went up to the monitor engineer and just pressed the button. He pressed the button, upside down, looking at the looking at his desk upside down. He just saw click and he walked away. <laughs> it was just Fixed. gone. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. That's the thing, it's about knowing got... it's about knowing the equipment as well, I suppose, because you know, Yeah, we've had some funny moments uh, on the road, haven't we, still off. <clears throat> You know, it's we've about... had we've certainly had some uh, some experiences on the road. I will tell you that much. We yeah. laugh now. We didn't laugh at them when I've had some of them. We don't laugh now. <laughs> yeah, they, um, I had a friend of mine. They had a, they had a band and they played. Um, where is it in on on the Sunset Strip? And they um, they asked me. Okay, I, I've never touched a musical instrument in my life. They asked me, the guitarist said, can you go and turn on uh, my, my amp so it's, when I get out there, I can just plug in, do it? Well, he didn't tell me which button to press. All of a sudden, I pressed something, and massive feedback went throughout the theater. And <laughs> It was definitely on. All, yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> I, I felt like... I, I really felt like I wanted to melt right into the stage because I was like going, I was better. So I, you know, I was like going great. Throughout the whole time after the show, if I'm walking around, they're going to be like pointing out, hey, that was that guy. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's, it's all about, there he is. It's all, it's there all he about is. experience. You see, right. Right. I show he did. <laughs> it's all about experience. If, if that, when that happens to, to like people like, People like us that have got experience, when that happens, what you do is you look at someone else and you go, "What's what's going on?" Yeah, you yeah. have to blame someone else. You have to instantly blame someone else because otherwise, you'll uh, you'll you'll be blamed for it. Or right. keep somebody else's equipment. Straight, yeah. Keep straight away, else. just straight away, turn to the turn to the monitor man, and just well, just give him a dirty look. I, I basically I basically told the guitar player after that. I said, um, "You can have to find find someone." To do that you know because i'm not going to touch your guitar because if you if i'm close enough to do that again i mean i'm gonna i'll put on a show i'll bust your guitar uh hendrix style on this <laughs> and i go no don't do that to me. don't do that and i said okay well you know get yourself a guitar tech and I think the next show they did they got one of their friends that knew guitar so that i was saying there but uh, that was that was a nightmare but I can only imagine it for a musician for that to happen, you know, while they're on stage and then something malfunctions and, you know, it's the, the, it's the biggest, it's, it's the biggest worry at our gigs. Give me two seconds, back in two seconds. Always. It's always, always the biggest worry at our gigs is that, is that equipment is going to, is going to mal malfunction. That's, that's it's the worst. And, and the worst, the worst times is when it happens and it's not, it's not our equipment sometimes. That we've we've had we've had a scenario where the all of the power to the entire stage has has just not what it's just stopped working. It's just been switched off, or a fuse has blown, or something, and it's taken them twenty five thirty minutes to work out what was wrong and fix it. And then we've got the crowd sitting there, and we're still not halfway through our sound check yet. And it's oh, it's it's horrible. It's, it's really horrible because because the crowd doesn't know what's going on. All they know is well. They didn't start on time, did they? What's going on? And it's 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 so it it's so it's a difficult situation, difficult situation right. to be in, because you don't want to just say, "Well, it's it's their fault, it's not us," 
but at the same time you you, you don't want to you don't wanna just take the blame for it exactly yeah you know it's <clears throat> there he's back all right that's a uh watch out yeah, we had um, a few, a few. Uh, we were still talking about things that happen on stage. I can remember uh, Bayar Mexico, Mr. Adam Goff. <laughs> yes, I haven't got. We haven't got the video, so we we can't we can't play it to people, thankfully. <laughs> but yeah, we we were playing, we were playing in uh, in Baja, Mexico, Mex Mexicali. Oh yes, that's what they call it, and. Um, it was a few days before one of the cruises and we it was a lovely lovely stage it was all outdoors and we were all set up and and it was one of those gigs where it was uh, it was light but it was going to go it was going to go dark during the gig that's 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 the time you that's always the time spot you want when you're outdoors yeah. and we were playing the rising <clears throat> and there's there's this this part of the song where it's it's quite it's quite gentle and then it sort of leads into i mean the guitar the, the song is a guitar solo but inside the guitar solo there is a guitar solo if you see what i mean um and where the big guitar the guitar solo sort of kicks in all the the strings and the piano and everything they they, they kick in at the same time and so i hit the keys quite hard <laughs> on, on that chord and on this particular occasion the the keyboard stand that I'd been provided by, by the crew at the Baja Festival, decided to collapse, <laughs> und <laughs> underneath the power of my playing. And uh, the best part is because we have we have got a, a a video of just that little bit that was captured by, by someone. And I just I just carry on playing the song. N no one I don't think anyone noticed that it had happened. No no one in, in the band because obviously we don't we're not looking at each other. And um, the front of the stage, full rock star pose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, he he definitely yeah. didn't notice. He was like <laughs> full on soloing. <laughs> and uh, the best part of the video is you can see that one of the stage techs comes around the the back from behind me, and he's trying to help, trying to put the <laughs> put the put the the keyboard back up onto a stand. And it was one of these big heavy keyboards, and it was it wasn't going to happen while I was playing. And so I end up, I'm still playing the song, but then I'm playing the song just with one hand as I'm batting the guy away, saying, <laughs> don't go away, leave me alone. <laughs> just let me finish the song. A few expletives, I think, Adam. <laughs> <clears throat> it didn't count because yeah, within, within being Mexican, I wasn't, I wasn't swearing in Mexican, so. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh... No, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting, interesting that's one, that's one times. Book, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh my. I don't think you've ever had a catastrophic um, gear failure, have you? You haven't even broken a string, have you? Shut up, Jay. You know, jinx me now. What do you think a... I'm doing? <laughs> <clears throat> you, have, you haven't had a guitar explode before, have you? No, we had. Um, we were playing uh, the Border Eye in Holland, and we, our next gig was in Belgium at the Spirit of '66. And we were driving uh, our little tour van um, from Holland, and we all uh, stayed at, um, at Wednesday. We all stayed at Wednesday. We were like in, in our attic, there's all of us in our attic on block beds and stuff. And um, it's pretty cool. We're coming back, and then I think, I don't know who was driving. I think, I think do, it was Dude driving. I think Someone so, was yeah. driving, and it was like, oh, um, and little Adam was driving, and it said, it came up saying, um, we had like warning signs on the on the lights. It was like, what's this? So we, we pulled over into the service station, and it was like minus 15. It was freezing cold. And we were just like, okay, we need to uh, see what's going on with this. And um, so we're looking at the engine, like, like men do, just look at the engine, have no clue what to do. Just go, like, <clears throat> all right. And then it sort of <laughs> this bang happened, flames, not loads, but it was like, oh God. and um, dude, our uh, little crew, our crew guy, dude, <laughs> he trips over in the van, fell on the fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher was going off in the van. We were like, 
<laughs> the engine's and, on fire, uh, not the inside of the van. Yeah. And then we, we luckily was at a service station. I think Adam, you had like a real bad flu. Mm-hmm. And we had obviously Wendy with us and, and Claire at the time. And we said, right, let's just get them home and um, we'll worry about the, the, uh, the van. And um, long story short, Wendy made us got a friend of her, uh, it was a, a brother in law to come and pick us up. I said, don't let the van go. Don't let the van go because this person comes to pick the van up. And as I pulled out saying we're saved, I saw the van going off into the distance on his back of this truck. I'm like, all the gear was in it and everything. And uh, luckily this uh, very friendly Dutch guy um, fixed the van and we got to the Belgium gig literally like 10 minutes before the doors opened. He practically fixed it overnight, didn't he? He, he fixed yeah. it in like a few hours on, on early Sunday morning. Mm. And then... We and ironically, going... that, that service station we stopped at blew up. Yeah, it's burnt down itself. Though, three isn't it? years, not three the same. Years, d- not the same day. No. <laughs> we didn't burn it down. <clears throat> yeah. But uh, yeah, it's funny. Man. I, mean, I suppose few... it, it. I suppose it would be a, a gear failure if uh, if you had to play the gig without your own guitar, wouldn't it? Yeah. But where was that? That was Italy, that wasn't was, it? That was Italy. Yeah, when the airline lost all our equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, check your bags. It'll be fine. Just just check all the guitars. Just pick them up at the other end. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, then we had... Um, I think the only t- technical problem we had was when... I think it was when we played H or H Pro or something like that, and I'd come running on the stage like pretty Steve Harris, and my wireless pack fell off, and I just had no sound or nothing in my... And, yeah. all ba- and then my batteries fell out of my wireless pack, and they were just rolling around on the stage, and I was like playing. I couldn't hear anything in my ears. I'm like, Ugh. and then, and all I could see was like a dude again, a crew guy on his hands and knees, picking up these batteries, like putting them back in my pack. I think that was the only time. That's quite funny. Guy was constantly moving as well, so he couldn't find the find it, get it in. Like. <laughs> He's like, stand still, stand still. So yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, they said stand still, stand still, and say, I'm, I'm doing a show here. <laughs> I'm trying to do a show. You put the batteries in place. I'm trying to perform. <laughs> I think he was being, I think his, his sarcastic ending was a massive piece of tape. It just tapes it together like that and went, right, there you go. It's not going to come out again there. Which it does now on every pack of mine, yeah. he tapes them up there. <laughs> so. It's probably the tape that breaks them in the end. Yeah. <laughs> massive piece of tape. You're trying to get the tape off to put new batteries in. It just pulls the unit apart. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think so. I've been okay with uh, uh, there was the uh, one of the cruises. You know, I used to use a a MIDI controller, much like this one. One of these. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. A black with the two oh, yeah. white white eight, knobs. Then. Yeah, it's eight faders yeah. and an eight uh, eight tuners, and. I got one of those, and my my suitcase had been had been searched by by airport security on the way into America, and um, I think what had happened was that the the lead had been pulled out of it, and inside it on the circuit board, this tiny tiny little bit of wire had come off the circuit board, and obviously it was just not working at all, and the the incredible part is that, that Christian, our bass player, he somehow managed to fix it. And yeah, he's he got... an electrical genius. <laughs> True. But he'd got a piece of wire that he was fixing it with. I couldn't even see the piece of wire that he was, he was working with. And he was soldering it back onto the back onto the PCB. And I don't even I I, I don't even know what he did. Didn't know, didn't some he? Some kind um... of some kind of witchcraft, I think. Yeah. Didn't we um <clears throat> He, he said, "I need some headphones, some old headphones." Yeah. And we found, and, and someone had stole their headphones from the airline. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. "Okay, we got these little headphones. Mm-hmm. Cut them up. We got a little bit of copper out of it and and wired it together." Yeah, that was clever. Mm-hmm. We did the same with William's bass at, um, when we had a band called Telescope Road who supported us a few times, and, he, and Will's bass stopped working. Mm-hmm. And we was like, "Chris, his bass isn't working." Chris comes down, puts it back together again. It's cool. 
but yeah, it's us. It's always good to have those kind of people that can, you know, think on their toes, you know, they Yeah. You know, That's what we always think we've got we've got useful we've got useful band members. Not only not only are they good at playing their instruments, but they they're also good at at, at specific things as well. So we've always got someone that can that can help fix something that's going wrong. That's good. That's good. you know, like you were saying earlier, it's like you need to have someone that knows the you know, especially knows your equipment. And the other people's equipment, you know, how it works, you know, you know, you don't need, I don't think you know, need to know all the details, but at least uh, something malfunctions, you know, you, at least you can jump in and go, hey, yeah, all you yeah, need yeah. to do is put that, put the A and the B together <laughs> or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah troubleshooting is always, it's always good to have someone troubleshooting problems. Yeah. It's part of it. You when you you know if everything went swimmingly, you'd have no stories to tell. You know what I mean? It'd just be like, yeah, we played every gig we played was flawless. We didn't have a problem. Everything was great. Right. Um, we, we've, we've, we've probably got a story from every gig, haven't we? <laughs> At least one. Probably. Yeah, just as long as not each each uh, gig is like a, a spinal tap. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's not that. I think the other one, the one moment we had was it, we, we were driving to Crescendo. We was headlining this festival called Crescendo in France. And um, Adam and I are uh, trying to uh, save some money. So we go, okay, we're not going to go on the toll roads. We're just going to go s- straight there. And it was like the, the, the sat nav, I don't think the sat nav could even calculate the time. It was like drive from Birmingham in England to the south of France. and Without um, toll roads. Without toll roads. And it got to about. It like came four. up. It came up at like eighteen hours, didn't it? It was ridiculous. Eighteen yeah. hours without stops. And it was. Uh, I know. I know people like to drive long distances in America, but I think eighteen hours is is a bit much for anyone over two days. And we we did it just straight there as well. We, right, did we didn't stop back. halfway or anything. I think you per you could. Um, if you do non-stop, if you go from. The East Coast to West Coast, or vice versa. I think it's three days if you could do it mm. nonstop. But if you uh, want to have stops, I think five days is is a minimum. Yeah, you know. But but that's also too is if you do you know you know stops at uh, uh, scenic sites, you know. The famous tourist areas, you know, got that going. But if you're just driving straight through, I think it's about three days. Mm. Well, we I've, three. I've never done that before, and I don't plan on ever doing that, especially <laughs> in my age. I don't, you know, if I was a lot younger, I think in my 20s, maybe I would have attempted that. Mm. Not now. <laughs> we, we like left about four o'clock in the morning, afternoon. We arrived there at like two o'clock the next next day in the morning. Yep. Yep. And it was like we and even the band were like, guys, we need to hit the toll roads because this is ridiculous. And then we, we hit it was, it was the toll road shaved about five, six hours off the trip. Yeah, <laughs> easily. <laughs> it's like, okay, we'll do that then. <clears throat> yeah. It's all uh it's all an experience and it's good fun. <laughs> I like it someone in the chat room goes if every gig gig was spinal a spinal tap i'd fear for the drummer and then and then wendy did a big explosion <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we don't want we don't want that you know that's well, want to have all those yeah, I nice <laughs> yeah. You know. well what um what else do you guys have uh, do you guys have anything besides IO Earth? Do you do solo things or or you just mainly concentrate on the band? Just quick, that side drummer who wrote that about Spinal Tap, Tim. That thing about what was that? that that bit about Spinal Tap is our drummer Tim. He wrote that. So yeah, he's writing. Um no, not really. Adam and I just, you know, we when we write for IO Earth it's 
that thing, you know. So we just do that, and it's it's cool. Hmm. Yeah, we don't really do anything, you know, away from each other. So I haven't really thought about it. To be honest, but no. You know, the main the main objective at the moment is getting the songs finished for Sanctuary, which is not too far off. Then, uh, yeah, there's there's a a couple we still need to write some lyrics for. That's always that's always, that's always the part. trickiest part for us because yeah. what we always say is that the the lyrics to the best song in the world, if you if you actually just read them out without the music, they still sound rubbish. <laughs> so a bit weird, man. how do you how do you know if you've written good lyrics or not? You just if you read them, they're rubbish. You just have to hope. <laughs> if you yeah. read them, and they're good. Then you're if they good. sound if they sound terrible, they're probably okay. But if, if you read them and think, oh, that could be a poem, that's no good for a song. No. Yeah, that's. Um, I saw. I had one um, CD I got from a band, an Italian band, and what they did is they reworked poems from William Blake as their song. Their songs and it was like it was pretty pretty uh, amazing but it's like you can tell tell you know that they were you know it, obviously that wasn't their first language and you can see how they were straining on certain words but it was just i th i personally thought that that gave something to the whole presentation but if you do you know like you were saying, poetry, you know, it, it, it's just, it has to work. And not all of it, not all the poetry out there in, in the world is would be great at, on music. Yeah. But, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's, um, maybe it's a controversial thing to say, but the, the musical Cats was, that was written from, from T.S. Eliot's poems. And, uh, Best will in the world to uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Not all the songs are uh, as stonkers on that, are they? <laughs> there's some that are, there's some that are the real stretch. It's like mm, you, you don't. It's, it's not one of them albums that you listen to every song. Yeah. That's, that's un unlike ours. Obviously, you listen to every song on yeah, ours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you we're know, always um, working on, we're always working on music, and we're always working on new songs and new ideas, and you know what. what yeah. Whatever they turn into, that's what they turn into, you know. You know, so it's not. Yeah, it's what, what we always. So what we always say is, any idea that we have is is always recorded and then logged away somewhere, and that's that's kind of where some bits of aura came from. Because we decided, well, we're going to do this this laid back thing. So let's look in the let's look in the the big big folder of ideas and let's let's see. What we can take from that and develop on and right. so we've always got we've always got a lot of stuff sort of lined up that that can be that could be sort of manipulated or developed into a, a new song yeah you have things that sometimes um <clears throat> we call it we have we got to io it we have to io earth this song to make it more io earth yeah it's, yeah, it's not it's not one of ours can't, you can't do it so it, it's just its own thing and you just gotta yeah accept it for that you know? and sometimes you've got to wait for the idea to come that's that's the thing like yeah. We've got there's a song there's a song called Airborne and the idea of it which I love. the idea of it appeared last year kind of early on in the in the first couple of weeks of of uh, of the whole pandemic thing happening last year and it was it was slated to go on to sanctuary for a long time but the problem is that it it doesn't want to go anywhere yet. It it doesn't want to it doesn't want to become a a fully fledged song. It's kind of it kind of does a thing that is good, but it just does that for like ten minutes. Mm. So we we don't want to we don't want to release it before it's finished, and we've got to wait for the idea to come for that. So it's so that song was replaced by another idea that we that we were working on. That one's quite new, isn't it? The the one that I was replaced by that was just a couple of months ago, and mm. we've already got we've already got demo drums 
on that one and it's and it's like it's 99 percent there so some songs are, are quicker than others but that strange thing that some people say about you know when uh <clears throat> when when someone asks uh, a novelist where'd you get your ideas from and they they kind of say well the idea is it just appears in my head as a as a full idea and then i've got to sort of make it into the thing make it into the book and sometimes that's that's what happens with with the songs that we're writing we kind of we kind of we come up with an idea and then simultaneously that idea will become the full song in both of our heads and it's those, like those ideas will just match and then it's just a case of well in it it's like just yeah. the, song, the whole production of the yeah then it's just a case of trying to make the the little the little boxes in logic trying to make those boxes do what the idea in our heads is already doing so we have a lot of people asking a lot oh when's the new album going to come out when's this going to do <clears throat> just we, we, the news will be there when it's when it's when it's there. yeah you always want to avoid saying something like well you know when it's when it's finished we'll release it when it's finished because obviously people want to they want to be excited about about new releases and they want to right. they want to know when something when something's on its way and all that but we found that we we hit the biggest problems when we've announced a date so like it happened with a bit more drop and go new now. world and we said oh it'll it'll be out it'll be out before christmas whatever whatever year it was and and we just had issues when recording New World. Let let you know early on recording New World, but not early on enough that it was easily fixable. <clears throat> we essentially had to start again with the first half of everything that was recorded for New World. So that sort of pushed everything back by six months. And it's like, well, if we hadn't said that it's gonna be out, we wouldn't have this problem now. Right. So what we do now is we sort of say we, the new album's in the works, probably twenty twenty one, and that gives us that gives us a full twelve months to right to, to release. Well, it gives us fun. a bit of time because you can have it completely completely go. finished, completely finished and recorded and mixed. And people people tend to think that if if they're finished writing it, then they should be able to listen to it. But the problem that we have then is that after the mixing, you've got to, You've got the process of mastering and then you've got to send the master off to get it made into cds and then you've got to get the cds shipped to people and that in itself sure. can take two months so it's it's we found that it's best just to not give precise dates just to <laughs> just to sort of say all right it's a new album. we're gonna we're gonna release something in 2021 or yeah like we did with aura we just said oh by the way we've written a new album there you go you can buy it now Right. That's, that's probably the that's probably the best way to do it, but, so much but more again, people do than, like with an album. Sorry, and just the music and getting you know the album art's got to be done. We've got all the yeah. promotion got to be done. The, all the you know the video if we're on a video, the the photography, everything has to be yeah. strategically placed. And if one thing isn't um, <clears throat> you know not quite ready, then there's no point really saying it's yeah. ready because it's not. Well, like we'd got we got at one point we got wendy trying to make the video to waterfall which is one of the songs on aura and she hadn't got her final mix of the song yet and well it's like how how can she make the video properly before she even knows how long the song is <laughs> because because we were, we were still at the point of saying well does this guitar solo go there or do we need to change that bit to something else or and we knew that we wanted that song to that, that video to come out as soon as the album was out right so yeah it's it's it's, it's difficult there's lots of moving parts and you've got to try and you've got to try and get them all completed within a few weeks of each other and it's it's uh it's a lot more difficult than than you'd imagine and getting getting everyone together as well like you know we don't get some band members together we've mm. all got their own lives and got their own thing going on which is obvious we've got Wendy has yeah. to fly in from holland to do an outside video shoot and it starts raining so we can't do that it's like you know so it's best just to keep it quiet and just say we'll be releasing an album and when we know when it's going to be coming out then you'll know 
That's always the best best way to do it because then if you release it earlier than what you know, you said, Oh, it's gonna come out in twenty twenty one. Okay, well, like you said, a couple months now it's down to <clears throat> to eight eight April, yeah. Eight months. So, you know, you got the eight months that it could come at any any time, you know. Yeah. And if you get everything on your end all done before what you were projecting, you know, it's always nice to get that thing a little early, you know, it's like, a, like, it's almost like a gift in a way, you know, you get something a little earlier than what Lots of projected. Yeah. <laughs> See, the, the other thing is, and we've, we've spoken about live streams and stuff, we've, we've often said in the past, it'd be really good if we could, this is when we're actually in the studio, like Dave and myself in the studio, if we could have a couple of cameras set up and we can do an hour or two of of like a recording session or a mixing session and we can live stream that but the problem that we have with that is that <clears throat> we'd be we'd be sort of playing one of the new songs for for people and we don't we don't want to we don't want to give stuff or we don't want to give it away too quickly right. we want people to be surprised by what the new album's doing because we're not like a lot of a lot of like pop and rock bands where you you buy the new album and it's a bit like the last one but the the words are a bit different it's right. that's that's not that's not what that's not what progressive rock bands do and and a lot of the a lot of the buzz that we had around aura it was it all it all sort of came from the sound of the, the album being quite different to what people expected and so if we'd if we'd already played a couple of the songs to a lot of people I think it would have really diminished the the that sort of excitement that people people got right. when they when the album started re- arriving. That's the thing with, with music. <clears throat> I think musicians be so eager to um, be acknowledged for what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? Not in mm. an ego ego way. It's just nice for someone. You know, I want people to hear it. So you're excited about it. You start giving yourself away too soon, or you become annoying because you're constantly putting stuff out. Yeah, you know, right. We like to keep a little bit of a mystique about the band. We don't do lots of gigs. You know, we do gigs that we that we want to do. You know, we don't like go, oh, we've got to go and play there because we, we did when we first started. We have to play that venue. We have to play that venue. So, well, well no, we will play where, where we, where we want to play and where we can put on the best show for the people that are going to be there. Because yeah. you know we we're not going to enjoy it if we're playing at a you know a shitty bar that you know the, the guy who owns the bar doesn't give a shit if you're there or not and right you know, we're not yeah. about that we're about putting on a show our albums are very high produced and you know we had, we had a lot of compliments of people saying that you know oh, they're not signed and it still sounds professional well, that, that, I don't know I don't know what that means but you know. <laughs> It it's still down to the. It's still sta- It has to still be down to the musician. Mm. It's, still, it's still down to the, the people writing and and recording the album. If yeah. I don't think necessarily, yeah. it doesn't necessarily follow that if you're, if you're signed, then your album sounds better. No, I don't. Think that, I don't think because I mean some we 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 can see that very clearly. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially in the last ten years, it's like you know a lot of the home studios sound, you know, produce music that sound better than the professional studios. Uh, Yeah. You know, I think a lot of it comes from having what, what feels like just unlimited time to work on something until it's, until it's right. When you're in the studio and you've got that, you've got that pressure of, you know, we're, we're paying, we're paying a lot of money and, and we've got, we've got to do these we've got to do these seven things today you know it, it becomes it becomes a case of just recording it until you've got something that that'll do and then trying to move on and <clears throat> for us it's always been a case of it it's it's never good enough if if you say it's you know it's okay it, it, then it's then it's not good enough it has to be it has to be right so in in those kind of situations we we always sort of ended up going back and doing stuff again and that cost you another day in the studio and and all that so when you're when you're self-producing like self 
when you it's totally self funded and you you've got your own you've got your own studio mm. you can you can just spend as much time as you want on right. each aspect of it and in the end it takes less time because you're not having to go back and redo everything everything is done until it's until it's absolutely right the first time so it, yeah, it, it I, does help that way yeah in the in the 90s um when the i know in sweden they had their uh most of, all of scandinavia they had that big boom of progressive rock a revival around the early 90s and then then england had the same thing and it's like but i've heard there was a few bands that their singers were all, only sounding like either uh peter gabriel phil collins or john anderson and they were trying and it sounded like they were forcing it and and then the studio you know they were doing home recordings and the home recordings sounded awful and it sounded like the drums were recorded in someone's shower you know and and it's just uh but you know that was the evolution in the 90s it was like that in the early 2000s it was like that but it wasn't until well now it's 11 years um ago that when things really started polishing up um, there was some rare occurrences of bands that had really good sounds, but I think that they were, they, maybe they knew more of what they, what was going on, you know, behind the scenes than, yeah. you know, if I think a lot of, if a lot of those bands in the nineties had the technology that we have now, I think there would have been a lot of more, a lot more of, uh, progressive rock bands everything's got a lot mm -hmm. more affordable now you don't have to spend twenty thousand pounds on a, a mixing console and you know everything's a lot cheaper now and and you know i, I record pretty much everything on on that everything's on that you know and i just use that to record onto the computer and you don't need is this there's, there's people who are into gear and they like having all the mm. vintage stuff and all that I'm not really into that sort of stuff as long as it works it works you know and uh, there's a lot of good companies that you can work get plugins and different you know eqs and compression and all that stuff and you know is it as good as the analog stuff probably not but it still gives you the sound you want so and that's what i'm doing now i'm coming into the studio uh, working on some stuff. Uh, yeah. Need to uh, crack on working, get the music out. It's the only way you can do yeah. anything, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Well, like I say the album will be ready when it's ready, when you add them. Yep. Well, it, it, it won't be ready before it's ready. <laughs> 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 that's that's, true. that's true, certainly true. Yeah, yeah. So. Unless you have time travel. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that's cool. uh, yeah, that's you know. Hey, you know, I I am one in a hundred percent sure that all your fans will wait however long it takes you guys to hear your music for the next. You know, they'll wait for. Mm. Because they, I, I look at, at a lot of the, on your um, Facebook page, a lot of the com comments and stuff like that. And you guys have very diehard fans mm -hmm. and that, that will fo follow you anywhere, you know, buy any product that you put out, you know, whether it's music or if you, you have merchandise, you know, so, you know, they'll, they'll wait for it, you know. Yeah. And then when it comes out, they're going to, you know, they'll be happy to spend their money. And, um, um, and get, and get the new CD. Yep. Yeah, man. 
We'll be back on the road soon. Once the COVID's gone, we'll be fine. We'll all be back. Oh, yeah. Soon. Yep. You can still get all of our updates on the uh, best places on the, the Facebook group. And if you want uh, sneak peeks and stuff like that, well, you can always go to the uh, iowearth.com forward slash shop and get yourself uh, access to the uh, the the it's access all areas. It's the fan club area on our, on our website. And uh, there's lots of little bits and bobs that are already waiting for you to to get so oh yeah i'll put i'll put the link down below so yeah. people can if uh and you know people that are already fans will probably know that but then hmm. maybe newer fans they'll know where to go and and like i said earlier that um anybody that misses this broadcast from the beginning it's going to be on my youtube channel about about an hour after we finish so okay Sometimes it's a little sooner, just depending on how things go between my, com my my computer and YouTube. Yeah. But, um, yeah, trusting in YouTube that's a that's a whole different subject, isn't it? Oh yeah. Actually, well, I tried doing <laughs> I tried YouTube doing one right. time I tried doing one time a live feed on YouTube, yeah. and for I didn't understand that it took them double the amount of time to load it up into the archives than it did if I would have uploaded a, a video on, from my computer. And it's like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get that. I thought maybe it would have been almost instantaneous after the, the end of the show. But I think if I, if I had a, a million subscribers, they probably, it probably would have been instantaneous. Yep. But um, well, do you guys have anything else you'd like to talk about? You know, you know, we already know that the album's coming out sometime this year. And, and you yeah, guys are... Well, that, that, that's all we've got, really, because there's not much, you know, it's, there's not much anyone can do, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky that I can come here and be on my own and on my own. You know, I'll come here and I can... Um, work on music and work on music there and we just bounce files back to each other just send you some stuff and um yep and then you know just gotta get keep cracking you know? yeah so making sure that the, the train keeps rolling you know otherwise it you just be still, still doing nothing and that's not me now so, there's a lot more that's how Wendy's making a video for one of the songs, which is really cool. And we're working on the album. Tim's doing demo drums. <clears throat> yeah, Rose's doing demo vocals. Luke's doing demo stuff. And Chris is. Doesn't quite anything. Building a house. But Chris is building a house. Yeah. Chris is building a house. That's, <laughs> that's, that's always useful. He's building a house, that's true. And <laughs> then, um, yeah, so once the lockdown's over, we can uh, start making some proper noise yeah yeah i had a friend of mine that uh, he's a musician and he was putting off for years and years of building his own little home studio and he goes well now that COVID happened he says i got all this time so he's been you know he said he's got it he got it done i think it was two two months ago and he said yeah, he said that's the one good thing that came out of COVID for me it's like I was able to build his home studio, you know, it's not, not only for audio, but for video, you know, you can hmm. do uh, music videos in there, or if you wanted to do something, you know, live stream, you could do that too, you know, whatever. So yeah, not, we will have that here. We'll have it all set up so we can do all that sort of stuff. But, um, we got stopped at our tracks with COVID, so it wasn't able to complete yeah. what we were going to do, but, you know. You'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Well, um, I guess if that's, you know, we should leave it right there. You know, it, you know, you got your new album in the works. It'll be, be out sometime this year. Oh, hopefully. And the next, hopefully. It's only the next 12 months. That's what we're aiming for. 
Yeah, it depends yeah. on the show. Sure. Yeah, we've got to we've got to get back into the studio and and record. So once once we're allowed to do that, then we'll be able to properly mix and, and master and everything. So it's it's all dependent on that. Oh, of course, yeah. And and then once that's you know once we get uh, how did they say once we're on the other side of the tunnel, you know, we'd be able to get back to some sort of normalcy, you know. Still, I still think we need to be careful, but you know, just not. You know, like on total lockdown. You know, no, uh, no, it'll be a little bit more on loose. Yeah. So maybe that. we appreciate you doing this, though, Ron. It's cool. Oh yeah, I, I thank you guys. You know, you know, it was a, almost like a, a last moment thing. You know, I was looking through who I wanted to talk to, and and I go, well, these guys. You know, I, I've I've known known of you guys since you first album so it's like i was saying you know they i wanted to get people on my end to find out about you guys yeah, and cool. that was my whole you, purpose wish you luck with it man just keep doing what I, you're doing you know? and um I, it'll build and build and it'll become this really cool thing hopefully for you ex- uh, you that's know, it exactly just, just keep doing your thing man all right well Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Adam. I really do appreciate you taking Thank the time you. out of your day. Sure. And um, again, got any out there, people that are watching right now, if you missed it from the beginning, it'll be on my YouTube channel in a, about an hour. So we'll a maybe a little up. less. We'll put a link up on our page as well. So yeah. People can okay. That. And I'll send you guys the, the link anyway. You know, yeah, yeah, send us the link YouTube. when it's up and then we. You know, we'll send it over. It probably might be better off sending it to Wendy. Okay. Send it to her. All that sort of thing. I mean, you can send it to us as well, but we'll just forward it to Wendy. <laughs> right, so, right, right. Just, just, just send it straight there. So. Yeah, man. All right. Cool, man. All right. Well, all right. Well, thanks again, guys. I really do appreciate it. Yep. You look after and you son. got You too. And uh, have a good rest of your, well, your evening. Yeah. And yep. And uh, I'll look out for you guys on on Facebook then. Yeah, yep. man. Keep in touch. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.